Modification of the camshaft is the most critical part of the steam engine conversion. From this point on, we should proceed in baby steps. First, let's identify the components. There are the cam lobes, intake and exhaust. There is the shaft and the gear. Regardless of your engine platform, your camshaft should be consistent with this basic design. This contraption is the low speed compression release that was causing that annoying little bump in the operation of the exhaust valve. Let's begin by understanding that the camshaft only turns once for every two turns of the flywheel and crankshaft. Because of this, the cam only opens the exhaust valve on every second upstroke of the piston as demonstrated in this animation. The ultimate goal of the modification is to transform the exhaust cam so that it opens the exhaust valve on every upstroke of the piston. We will do this by adding a lobe to the opposite side of the exhaust cam by brazing round stock in place 180 degrees from the original lobe and then shaping the brazing material. From this point on, we will only be dealing with the exhaust cam. The intake cam will not be modified and the intake valve assembly will be left disassembled. The intake valve will remain in place and dormant. Before modifying the cam, we must first remove the low speed compression release. This is done by grinding off the two rivets that hold it in place. Observe how the rivets are ground and removed. The compression release is free of the camshaft once the rivets are removed. You must now find a suitable material of the correct diameter and length for the second cam lobe. A medium to high grade steel bolt is fine. If you are using a Predator engine, those carburetor stud bolts that we asked you to save are ideal. If you are not using a Predator engine, Use the following procedure to determine the correct diameter needed. Using a digital caliper, simply determine the difference between the round portion of the cam and the lobe, as demonstrated here. In the case of the Predator, the lobe is 221 thousandths of an inch. The narrow side of the Predator carburetor stud bolt is 232 thousandths of an inch. These extra few thousandths are needed for brazing prep and final shaping of the cam lobe. It should also be noted that a few extra thousandths of an inch in the diameter of this material are not going to affect the performance of a steam engine. The length of your round stock should be at least that of the cam shaft to assist in positioning and securing of the material during brazing. If you are using a Predator engine, Remove the wide portion of the carburetor stud bolt. 
Using a belt sander, deburr the cut and remove the galvanizing from the end of the bolt. Positioning the new lobe exactly 180 degrees from the original may seem tricky, but we'll walk you through the best way. You must first accept and trust that the human eye is a fantastic surveying and alignment tool. Clamp your camshaft in a vise with the exhaust cam lobe pointing straight down and perpendicular to the jaws of the vise. Make slight adjustments until both you and an associate agree that the cam lobe is properly positioned straight down. Ignore the intake lobe. It is slightly offset and can throw off your perception. Next, place the round stock on top of the cam. Again, your eye will tell you when it's on top, centered, and aligned straight. Try not to focus on oddities in the shape of the shaft, but instead on the exhaust cam for centering and the end of the camshaft for alignment. Use a pair of vice grips to clamp the round stock to the intake cam lobe. This can be tricky as it tries to shift, but you'll get it. When both you and an associate agree that the round stock is tightly clamped, exactly on top and centered, you can remove the entire assembly from the vise and reposition it for brazing. We cannot teach you to braze in this video, but it's a very easy skill to learn and there are endless instructional videos online. Brazing can be done with a simple, inexpensive brazing kit available at most hardware stores. If you use one of these smaller sets, we recommend using a standard propane torch for preheating the materials to near brazing temperatures. This will save the expensive oxygen tank for when it's needed. Begin by preheating the cam. This is due to its dissimilar size and metallic properties. Then apply braze to the cam at its widest portion. working slowly towards the new lobe until one side of the lobe is fully brazed. Repeat on the other side. When you are finished, you should have a contraption that looks like this. Do not try and artificially cool your work. The dissimilar metals need to cool slowly and naturally. Now, use a hacksaw or cutoff wheel to carefully remove the excess of the round stock. If you are using a cutoff wheel, you can use it to rough shape the excess material off the sides of the new cam lobe. You are now ready for the initial shaping of the cam lobe. Work very slowly with a belt sander or file to try and mimic the original lobe on the opposite side. Use very light pressure in short steps. You should not be grinding or filing into any of the original steel on the cam. Stop often 
and inspect your work. As you near the end, your final transition points between the steel and the braze should be worked with a file until they are nearly invisible. Small divots like this are okay as long as there is a suitable, smooth, flat surface for the tappet to follow. You must also remove all of the glass-like brazing flux. Your initial cam should look like this. A new lobe should mimic the original. Exact final sanding and adjusting will occur after performance testing in the engine. You are now ready to proceed to video number three by using the link provided in the description of this video.